Welcome back to uh, Warriors.com. We're training camp live here. I'm Jim Barnett, of course. Each and every day we are going to bring you player interviews, and we've got a lot of contests, as we said the other day, um, from Tweety a day. And before we get going with Harrison Barnes, I want to mention that at GS Dubs, you asked a question of Harrison the other day, who was the hardest person on the team to guard? He answered that question, and you are the lucky recipient of this signed autograph basketball by all the players that we interviewed, including Jerry West. So congratulations to you at GS Dub Dubs, and that's a, that's a nice thing to win, isn't it? Oh, very nice. But I'm gonna get rid of it right now. We're gonna turn it over here to our trusty man. And Harrison, um, we have some questions to ask you from all of our people who call it, or, uh, write in on Twitter. But I wanted to ask you a couple of things. Now in your second training camp, what is different for you than last year's training camp as a rookie? Comfort, for sure. I mean, just being out here, just being able to you know, play with guys that you're familiar with and be able to be coached by people that you know, it makes it just a lot easier and the transition's been smooth. What specific off-season uh, regiment did you have or drills that did you do that uh, you might not have done before? Just training a lot harder in the weight room. I think after going through last season, especially in the playoffs, you realize you know, it's a grueling season, and, you know, very hard on your body. So the biggest thing I try to work on was my body getting ready for the season. How much basketball then do you play? I know you do a lot of drills and so forth, but how much basketball competition going up and down the floor? Is there much of that in the off season? I didn't spend a whole lot of time playing pickup games or you know playing a lot of one-on-one -on -one competitions. I try to mostly just work on my skill work and just stay in the gym. You know, in, in fact, I, I know this for a fact from talking around and through the years, a lot of NBA players don't play a lot of one-on-one -on -one amongst yourselves. We did when, you know, when I played all the time. We were always trying to beat the other guy, improve the one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one, uh, matchups and get your first step going. But why is it that players don't play more one-on-one? -on -one? It's hard because everyone has a different regimen in the summer. You know, some guys train harder early and, you know, kind of wean down before training camp. Other guys take a lot of time off and then try to come to training camp and then, you know, train really hard. So everyone's different. Hey, by the way, after third practice now, uh, this morning, how does your body feel? My body feels good. And I hopefully, uh, if I'm blessed enough to play in this year, league 10 years, hopefully I can say the same thing. But right now it feels good. You're going to play a lot longer than 10 years, I'm telling you. <laughs> you just turned, doggone, you just turned 21 last, what, May 30th? May 30th. Yeah. Um, I was going to ask you, too, the team expectations. Everybody has great expectations this year from ownership on down. And I know that I, I've heard rumors that there's a number that uh, some people are saying. All of you players, all 15 of you are going to be on the roster. Are you all on the same page with the same number? Or do some of you have different ideas about how many games you can win? <laughs> I mean, well, it's very simple. You know, obviously the number is one. You know, you want to win the first one and go from there. So I think that's what we're all trying to do right now and just go from there. How about personal goals for you this year? And we'll, we'll talk later about uh, the addition of Andre Ugadala and what that means. But what kind of personal goals do you have after such an outstanding rookie season where you started every game and then when David Lee went down, they asked more of you in the playoffs and you rose to that occasion. So that's got to inspire you. So how about your personal goals? The biggest goal for me this season is just to be consistent. You know, last year, you know, it was very up and down during the regular season, and you know, I had good playoffs. So I just want to obviously continue to do that and continue to play consistent. That's a very good goal to have, and that's what happens when uh, after you get a little experience. I, I think that's right because as rookies, you know, most of us are inconsistent. That's a good goal. Uh, we have a few questions for you again from Twitter, and this is SC. Drizzy Child 40. What's your opinion on Drake's new album? Also, do you have a favorite song by Drake? 
<laughs> I saw him on Jimmy Fallon recently, but anyway. Yeah. Uh, no, I thought it was a great R&B album. I think Drake kind of getting a little bit away from rap and more towards R&B, so I thought it was a, I thought it was a great album. All right. And Elise, Elise, what was a rookie duty you're glad you don't have to do anymore? Ooh, uh, probably the Jamba Juice runs before uh, before the <laughs> flight. That's uh, I don't have to do that one anymore. All right. This is uh, at Ant Curry. Ant, not A-U-N-T, but A-N-T, 30. What's your favorite video game? All right now, 2K14. Okay. I think we talked about that the other day. In fact, you picked up a few extras for some of your teammates. Yeah, I got everyone uh, decked out with that, so probably toss it between NBA 2K14 and Grand Theft Auto. Do you have a favorite NFL player, she also wanted to ask? Uh, not really. I don't watch the NFL that closely. But you are a big Breaking Bad fan, and tonight's the last episode, right, of this series, of this scene, uh, this year? It is. Uh, one of the best shows, you know, on TV, uh, and I think in the history of TV shows, so it's a sad day, sad day. You've seen every one of them, every, every episode? I have. Harrison, thanks for your time, and uh, good luck in the training camp. We'll see you along the way, starting with an exhibition game in just about a week away. Yeah, thanks for having me, Jim. All right. Be sure to st tune in each and every day. Tomorrow, by the way, I'm, I'm going to be talking uh, with Jermaine O'Neal in just a few minutes, but tomorrow we're going to have Andrew Bogut and Kent Bazemore. I think Tim Roy will be with you on that. So submit your Twitter questions. They may get on the Air Force. Thanks for tuning in. Jim Barnack, Warriors.com, back here at Training Camp Live. And be sure and submit your uh, Twitter questions all the time. We'll try to get as many as we can on the air. Just had Harrison Barnes, and now we've got Jermaine O'Neal. And Jermaine, your 18th year in the league. I'm just wondering about training camp because you go back to the 90s. Are training camps easier today and, and less demanding than they were 18 years ago for you? Um, you know what? It is a little bit more uh, demanding because you're older. Um, you know, back then, you know, when I was 17, 18, 19 years old, I just wanted to fly around and, and just play basketball all day. Um, but now it's more that you got to take care of your body, get enough rest, got to eat the right things. Um, so, you know, it's a little bit more demanding, but, you know, it's still, it's still very challenging no matter how old you are. I think not only physically but mentally, you know, trying to get new concepts, play with, playing with new players and, you know, for myself, a new coaching staff, new philosophy. Uh, so it's definitely challenging. Aside from the uh, physical limitations, you know, we, as it gets with age, and I know very, very well about that. Um, how different is it as far as like running? It seems like today there's the, you worry about that system so much, and I, I know when I was in my training camps, they were just trying to get us in shape, and you guys are already in shape when you come to camp. Was there more running for you 15, 16 years ago, or is there more running now, or less running now, and, and more drills? You know what? Every every team varies, uh, to be quite honest. Like last year in Phoenix, we ran an awful lot. You know, we did a lot of running without uh, without the basketball, uh, which is by far the toughest. Um, but here, you know, we do we do running with basketball related uh, drills, and I think that's probably the funnest thing to do because you know it's it's a contest, it's a challenge, and and your competitive nature uh, really goes up to the highest level. So. Uh, it's a lot easier to do it with the basketball and rather than getting on the line and doing time, you know, time sprint. So uh, each, each team, you know, varies. 
You know, I talked to you uh, several weeks ago when you first came came to town here, and I know that you were in great shape and you got your knee fixed all up. After your third day of practice, how do you feel physically? I feel good. Um, I feel pretty good. You know, I had, had a little you know, soreness, but everybody in the locker room has soreness. You know, yeah. um, I really trained this summer uh, to be ready for this. Uh, you know, Coach Jackson came to me and asked me how I feel, and the first thing I told him, I said, I trained for this. And that's just really what it is. You know, you, you, you put everything you can put into your training, uh, and that's not just what you do physically, what you do mentally. Uh, and then you, you get prepared. You come in here and, and you just go all out and, and let things fall as they may. And I, f I feel like I'm ready for it. What do you do between the morning practice and the evening practice? I remember my days, you know, with the Knicks and, and, and with the Warriors also. Uh, they worked us so hard. We, we used to take naps, and, and sometimes it was hard getting out of bed for that evening practice. Well, you know what? Um, our morning practices are, are the hardest ones. It's full contact. Um, so, you know, you, you try to go home and get the proper... Uh, a meal in, you try to get a lot of carbs. Uh, I'm not a big s sleeper, so I, you know, I get like an hour in just to get the body rejuvenated. Uh, but then when I get back from the second session, which is, which is the latter one, uh, then that's when I get a lot of rest in. Uh, so it, you got to go with how you feel. I know a lot of guys that don't sleep at all, uh, you know, doing you know, doing the process. But for myself, it's about just maintaining the body and, and getting that energy packed back up. Has Mark Jackson talked to you about? Uh your role this year on this team, or is that premature? And uh, I, I know he appreciates and embraces your veteran leadership. All right. Uh, you know what? Uh, we haven't really had an in-depth conversation about it yet, but I'm, I'm here to do whatever he needs me to do. You know, I think that's, uh, that's the key factor. You know, whatever the role is that's given to me, uh, you check your egos at the door, and you know, it's all about, you know, trying to win the ultimate goal. And that's our plan, to try to get to the ultimate level, and, and uh, whatever you ask me to do, I'm going to be sure I do it as hard as I possibly can. I know one thing you do very well, and that is, yes, you can play with your back to the basket, but you're very adept at taking the ball on the elbow and taking a center away and knocking down a 15 to 17 foot jump shot. Now, you're a very good shooter, and you've proven that through 17 years of NBA experience. My question is this, with all the great shooters on this team, and they love to knock it up there, are there going to be enough shots for you to, to score a little bit? Well, you know what? Um... You you just you, you, you score when given an opportunity. Um, you know my job is to make sure that Stephanie's guys and HB and and uh, and Clay and these guys reach their full potential. Um, I know you know who who the main guys are on this team. There's no question about that. You just come in and you know when given an opportunity, you look to go punish the guys, and you know when you don't, then you go try to get the rebound and and block some shots and then do other things. He said the magic word, block some shots. He's averaged nearly two block shots per game throughout his career, including last year over one and a half per game. So you're going to help this team defensively. And, of course, that's what they're trying to emphasize. All right, we have a few questions for you from people on Twitter who chimed in. And this is a very familiar one. At Elise Elise, what's your favorite food, Jermaine? I would have to say anything that has chicken in it. I'm a big chicken guy. Uh, you know, some beef every now and then, but chicken pastas, chicken, baked chicken, you know, chicken anything. Healthy food. Elise Elise, you asked that same question the other day about his favorite NFL team. We answered that. I can answer that for you. Dallas Cowboys, unless you've changed. Dallas Cowboys. I'm about to take a shower, run home, and catch that San Diego game uh, right now. I'm going to let you go in about 30 seconds. How about at Biggie Miggs? Favorite thing you did this summer, Jermaine? Wow. Um, I would have to say, you know, I took, I took my uh, wife and kids to Paris, and um, it was actually my second time, and my wife's second time going. Uh, but my, we took my son and daughter, and they had a, a fantastic time seeing the different landmarks, and um, that was probably the, the highlight of my summer. I think I know the answer to this next one. JYA Air, how does it feel to be a warrior? Man, it feels great. Um, you know, I, I really started thinking about this process last year. Um, you know, when I first got the phone call from my agent, it was a possibility I could have came in last year. Um, and so, you know, I really was able to evaluate not only the, the style of play, but the players that were on, on the team. And uh, it's almost a perfect fit because a lot of philosophies I've been quite used to throughout my career. Uh, hard nose on defense philosophy and get out and, and score baskets and, you know, on the offensive side. So it feels good to be in a city that, that supports their fans, not only when they were, not only while they're good, but also when they're struggling a little bit. And that shows, you know, the, the true uh, sign of a, of a real fan base. And finally, Josh. Gazzoni off of Facebook. Who's the hardest center in the lead to guard, past and present, for you? Um, I don't know if anybody present. Um, I feel like I'm strong enough to guard most of the guys uh, presently, but uh, Akeem Olajuwon. 
you know, when I look at, you know, you, you can always say Shaq because he was so dominant, but just far as ability to move and, you know, a thousand fakes, jumping off the wrong leg, using both hands, Akeem Olajuwon had to be by far the toughest cover that I had to guard because I, did, I just didn't know what he was going to do, even though I read the scout report before the game. Tremaine, tremendous. Thank you very much. Look forward to this entire season. Thank you for tuning in to our live streaming video. I'm Jim Barnett for Jermaine O'Neal. We'll be back tomorrow. At that time, Andrew Bogut and Kent Bazemore will be our guests. Be sure and tune in. Thanks very much.